Obstacles in a person's life is a must. Yet, imagine having to go through obstacles at such a young age. Starting off with your name. Oh, and let me tell you, this obstacle itself has sub-issues, such as having to explain its meaning, how it's pronounced, and correct them when they think it's Mazen, which is a male's name, and then having to convince them it's Mazan, and that's me. Thanks, Famjam. I love you for that. You really made me understand the meaning of being unique at such a young age. The second obstacle, lupus, which seemed like a big issue to me and my family back then, and believe me, it was. Because just like many of you wondering, we didn't know what it was back then. Let me put it for you in bullet points, what lupus was for me growing up as a child. Since I wasn't allowed to be in direct sunlight for long, I wasn't allowed to join my classmates in swimming classes, which made me wonder, just like the cartoons, maybe I might be a vampire. Or simply the fact that if I was in water for too long, that would make me decompose. Eating tasteless food that lacked salt, because of the fact that I was on cortisone, a lot of salt would cause water retention. And the fact that I was only allowed candy once a week as a child, that was harsh. Yet, thank you, mom and brothers, for sticking to this regime with me, or to actually ensure that I stuck to it. I love you. That's proper family dedication, I tell you. Did I also mention that I was the nerd that got glasses before everyone? Oh, and I also practically had to be under radar all day, every day, to ensure that I stay safe. But guess what? That didn't stop me from being a, che a cheeky child growing up. Got you there, parents. <sighs> Fast forward to middle school and high school. My pains started getting worse. My hospital admissions started becoming more. My differences were obvious. It wasn't comfortable at all. But then, I knew I was different somehow. I just didn't know how. I knew something was missing. But I was sure, one day, I will figure it out. Fast forward again. I graduated college, started working, and started my first master's degree. Lupus was MIA. It was nowhere to be seen. Because again, thanks to my family, it was under control. Then comes the year of obstacles as an adult, 2014, the year where my emotions were a complete roller coaster. Due to the emotion mix up, I had a severe flare up that year. The flare up led me to have three brain strokes. Three. I was paralyzed from mouth all the way down. I could not move, could not talk. I could not even eat or speak right. I had to get help with all of that. My initial treatment started here in Oman. And during that period, I kept trying to convince myself that it was okay. I kept trying to convince myself everything is going to be fine, and laughing about it. Then, my family took me to Germany to continue my treatment there and get proper rehabilitation. When I arrived to Germany, they started with my treatments and tests. Then, when nothing worked, they had to go to the last resort, chemotherapy. 
And again, from the state of shock at how everything was happening so fast, I laughed when they said that. And believe it or not, the first question I asked my professors, will I lose my hair? Yeah, that mattered. <laughs> I remember my mom and brother sitting right there, immediately replied and said, it's okay. If you lose your hair, we promise to cut it just as short so we're all the same. I'll never forget that. My chemo session started. Side note, there were many. I did, la I did start losing hair. It was painful to wake up every day with hair on the pillow and seeing my hair get thinner. I was sad and cried every day trying to convince my mom to cut it. Then one day, she finally agreed and took me to the salon in my wheelchair. Once we got there, the first thing she did was take a seat right next to me. Then she braided her hair and grabbed the scissor and snipped it all off. I was in a state of shock. I looked at her and said, why? She said, I promised you to not leave you in pain of losing your hair while I had mine. Since I was born, I never remember my mother with anything except long, beautiful hair. And for me, it was all gone. With the right support system, I worked really hard trying to recover because I remember the professors walking in before starting my treatment and telling me, listen, I know you're young, I know it hurts, but you might never work again, drive again, and don't even think you'll continue your education. That drove me crazy. I could not imagine that this is happening to me. And I looked at him. I said, we'll see about that. <laughs> we worked day and night. I had to learn how to walk again, talk again, eat again, and even sit again, since I lost all of that while being disabled. Guess what? Days passed by, and look at me. The doctors, you were wrong. I worked, I continued my studies, and got my second master's too. <laughs> I went back to driving and living my life like nothing ever happened, and living it better than before. But I made sure to be grateful, way more than I ever was before, for everything that I have. Then, when I came back, I still had that inner feeling that all of this happened for a reason, I'm sure. I just never knew why, but I kept telling myself day by day, that one day, I'll find out. That's when the year 2020 came, during the period of Ramadan. One day, I randomly picked up the phone and called the head nurse of the rheumatology department that I got my checkups here with in Oman. And I mentioned how I would like to get to know girls that have lupus just like me. I just wanted to be friends with them. I told her, it's time that we support one another and get to know each other. She got excited and said, OK, let me just speak to them. And if they agree, I'll send you their numbers and their name. And honestly, I had basic intentions. And the main intention was to ensure myself that I was not alone. There are people like me. Then the WhatsApp group was created. We started off with five. Amani girls only. Then it grew 
to 81 girls from the GCC expanding to other Arab regions today. We discussed how we wished there was more awareness. Our conversations got deeper. We wanted to do more. Yet, with every story we heard, we were also happy that we were not alone in this. So with our discussions, I spoke to the girls, and I asked the active ones, would you like to help me spread more awareness? Believe me when I say, I never knew how. It was a question, but I knew something was going to come out of it. And thankfully, they all agreed and said yes, excitedly. That's when I started another group called the Media Group. In the Media Group, from there, Lupus Rahman was born. We discussed how we would start off with the Instagram page, the content, and what we would do, where we would try to get our resources from, since we did not, and still, do not want to put invalid information. That's when I approached the doctors, and I asked them for their support. I wanted them to at least answer the main questions that the girls had related to lupus, and so that when people would see the information, they would know that we got it from a valuable source. Unfortunately, that's when the pandemic started, and they apologized and said, no, we can't, because of the stress they were in. And I completely understand. It's not easy. After a period of time, guess what? Doctors started cooperating. Pharmacists started helping. People wanted to be a part of Lupus Oman, and thank you all for that. We really appreciate it. Our page grew. We worked hard, since it was all personal effort. We split the work between us. Someone got the information, the other one did the designs. Someone did the healthy recipes with the benefits, all in the sake of helping spread lupus awareness. I can proudly say that I stand here today, after six years of everything happening, knowing why everything happened the way it is. Maybe it was simply to meet the beautiful girls, or, for what I'm proud of, Lupus Rahman, to be, a, to be born. So if you're still wondering, so if you're still wondering what lupus is, it's an autoimmune disease where our immune system attacks our organs and our healthy tissues. Doesn't seem like it, right? I know, because we have the right support system. So what people think lupus is, disability, unable to do anything. And it can be, without the right support system and the wrong information. But with the right support system, this is what lupus can look like. Hikes, trips, fun, and a lot of determination. So thank you to everyone that helped lupus Oman happen. So now to the main question and the purpose of this talk. Are you going to help support us and bring out the best in us? <laughs> or are you going to continue to treat lupus patients as disabled, perfectly imperfect human beings? Thank you.